Hey everybody, Nomadic Matt here, and this week I am talking to Steve Cam of NerdFitness.com. A lot of you always ask, how do you stay in shape and eat healthy on the road? And so I brought in Steve because he's sort of the expert on that. And in this week's interview, he's going to address all those issues. So, Steve, thanks for being here. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good, good. I'm, uh, we're here in Portland at World Domination Summit. Oh, yeah, we are. Good times. Sh yeah, shooting some video in, his, in your hotel room. Swanky, isn't it? Yeah. Not bad. Th things are going to get crazy. All right, so... To my audience out here who may not be familiar with NerdFitness.com, sure. or you, um, and if you're not, you should be. Um, that's why we're doing this. That's why right. we're doing this. All so right. give people the quick and dirty on who is Steve Cam and what is Nerd Fitness. Sure. So what's up, guys? My name is Steve. I'm a huge nerd. I also like helping people get healthy. Yeah. So I had an idea to start a website a couple years back called NerdFitness.com. Okay. And essentially, it's beginning tips and, and tricks for people that are interested in getting started with losing weight and making better uh, eating decisions, exercising, um, but doing it in a way where they don't need a gym membership and they don't need to buy supplements or any of that stuff, just making it really simple for everybody. Uh, about three years ago, I quit my day job and, has been doing, and I've been doing nerd fitness full time since then. And about two and a half years ago, I decided to sell all of my stuff and inspired by guys like Matt and Chris Gillibo. I got rid of everything and put my remaining um, items into a backpack, yeah. grabbed a laptop, and booked one of those around the world plane tickets. Obviously, with me traveling yeah. and running a fitness site, I had to find a way to stay in shape while traveling. So yeah. I've spent essentially a year and a half doing everything I can to stay in shape to represent my brand and nerd fitness in the community properly yeah, while not having access to a gym and living in various places all over the world. Okay. And I think we met like two and a half years ago or so. I yeah, mean, it's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. Um, right around where, where that Gizmodo post went crazy. Uh, that was a fun one. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so I've known Steve for a while, and you know, I, I will link to this post in sort of the show notes, um, but he sort of inspired me to think about food and staying in shape on the road because I am really bad at doing that. You know, lots of late night drinking, you don't know where to get healthy food. Um, and so you just end up eating pizza and burgers. And, sure. Too and many so, beers, too many beers, too many yeah. late nights on enough early mornings. And, and so as a traveler and mm -hmm. someone who has to stay in shape, sure. um, how do you balance, how do you find a way to travel and stay in shape? How do you do it? Sure. Well, up until I began traveling, I was always, a, I was a gym rat. I loved yeah. going to the gym. I loved picking up heavy weights. It was just something that really resonated with me as a nerd. And a video game fan, just the concept of me being a character, watching myself pick up heavier yeah. weights and running faster really, really resonated with me. So uh, I remember taking my first trip to Peru, my first trip really out of the country. This is coming up on well, almost three and a half, two and a half years ago, uh, a little over two and a half years ago. And I spent three weeks in Peru and convinced myself that I didn't have time to exercise and that I couldn't do any of the things that I was used to doing yeah. because I didn't have access to a gym. Sure enough, in three weeks, I didn't exercise. I tried to do some things here and there, but I came back and made the decision that, like, dude, there's got to be a way. People travel. Mm -hmm. People can find a way to stay in shape. I run a fitness website. Yeah. I have to remove those excuses for myself so that I can then remove those excuses for everybody else as well. So, I mean, you don't have a gym, mm -hmm. and so what do you do? Like, how do you... What are like the workouts or, you know, you can go for a run, mm -hmm. I mean, that, you don't need a gym for that. Right. But if I want to like, there's a fly here. Um, frequent, frequent flyer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. That was awful. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I like to, you know, keep muscle mass. Like mm -hmm. how do I maintain muscle mass or, you know, so I'm not like. Walking upstairs, being like, <gasps> sure, yo, absolutely. Well, I, like like I said, you know, I'm the same way. I'm how I look, you know, for, for better or worse, is yeah. very is is tied very closely to my brand. Like yeah. I have to stay in shape, and if I only ran or if I only, you know, if if I just did um, cardio, mm -hmm. I would lose all the muscle that I would have, and I would look like a guy that should not be probably running a fitness website. Yeah. So I put a, I put a huge focus when I decided to sell all my stuff and start traveling on finding a way to stay in shape without actually having to go to a gym. So I started studying things like uh, gymnasts and people that do really, really intense bodyweight exercises and came to realize that a gym is not necessarily required in order to build muscle, to stay in shape, to get stronger. 
you just need to find a way to get really creative with the exercises that you're doing. Okay, and how do you do that? Sure. So what I do anytime I get to a new town, um, what I would what I would focus on is I, you know I make exercise a, a priority for me. And everybody says, especially when they're traveling, I don't have time to exercise, okay. which we all know is crap. Yeah. You you essentially what you're trying to say is instead of saying I don't have time to exercise, you're saying exercise is not a priority for me. Yeah. These other 20 things that I'm doing throughout the day take priority over that exercise. So for me, I made the decision that when I started traveling, exercise had to become a priority. Okay. Every other day for 20 to 30 minutes, I would strength train. Okay. That was just no question about it. So how do you do that? Absolutely. What I would do is whenever I got to a town, I would wander in one direction or the other until I came across a park or a playground a tree branch, yeah. uh, a bus stop overhang, something that I could hang from. Okay. As long as I could find something to hang from, I could find a way to get healthy. I would use that tree branch or swing set or park or whatever to do pull-ups. Yeah. That would work all of my pull muscles. Yeah. I would then do things like push-ups or handstands okay. or, you know, and there's ways you can get really complicated um, and really, really difficult uh, exercises when it comes to these types of movements. And then I would do things like squats and lunges for my legs. So really with three movements, you can work out your entire body. So I would pick, you know, I'd do one set of each of them and then do a couple circuits of those things. Within 20 minutes, I'd be exhausted. My muscles would be toast. Yeah. And I'd find a way to do that every other day. Again, 20, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes at most, every, every other day. Combining that with healthy eating, I found a way. I came back from my... You know, eight month adventure in better shape than I had left after spending you know eight years in a gym, and I was convinced yeah. then that a gym is no longer a requirement. And Steve's written a number of really great posts on this that I've I've used, and I'll link to them too, so you guys can see it too. Did you ever feel like when you started, it was hard to create these habits, or it was hard to do this? Like, you go away, you're like, all right, there's got to be a better way. I'm gonna work out, and then the rea reality hits you that you don't know how to work out. Sure. And you know, what were some of like the barriers that you had? Because that's all well and good what you're saying. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go do this. And right. then, you know, you go out with some people, you sleep late, yep. you have to sightsee. You're like, mm -hmm. eh, maybe, it's, maybe yeah, I don't have 30 minutes. Yet. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I think the... Well, I don't know where a park is. I don't <laughs> really want to go wander and find one. Right. Well, Google is your friend. Yes. I, I Google, I look for the green, the, the, the square of yeah. green on a map and I say hopefully they got a tree branch or a swing set or something but I definitely agree with you there I think it's education is one thing but implementation is is far more important yeah um, and for that reason I think what what's important for people to do is understanding like you said that habit building is important and it's really easy to stay in shape when you're at home because you can get yourself into a routine yes you can work out every other day you go to the same gym you have the same schedule, everything is fine. When you start traveling, your schedule goes right out the window. Yeah. You might there, be, there are no routines when you right. travel. You might be on a bus for 14 hours, yeah. or you might get stuck in an airport, you might, whatever. So in those instances, I'm a huge fan of the, I call it the never to rule. Okay. And by that, I mean, if for some reason, whatever happens, if let's say you want to work on a Monday, Monday rolls around, your flight gets delayed on Sunday, you spend all day Monday in an airport, it's raining, you have you meet, you meet a great group of people and you get a chance to go do something world changing or yeah. something life changing or you have a great experience that you'll never have the opportunity to do again. Yeah. Take that experience. Absolutely, 100%. That being said, the next day, or the next opportunity you have to work out, that becomes the most important workout you've ever done in your entire life. So yeah. I never miss two days in a row. That's what yeah. I, If I miss one for whatever reason that next day or even if it's two days of travel, of hectic, whatever it is, as soon as I have a, finally have an opportunity, I suck it up, I put my hard hat on, and I go to work. I always say, all right, I'm going to do push-ups when I travel. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's, I can do that. It's, it's so easy. easy. You can drop down in a hotel yeah. room. I mean, and, we can and, do it right now. Mm -hmm. I, but I always find that I'll do it a few days, I'll be great, and then I, I won't do it. And one of the things, I always find it weird being in a hostel, you know, in a dorm room, doing push-ups, mm -hmm. you know, and so, how do you feel about that? Because it's, <laughs> it's just weird, like, you know, I have no problem doing it when people aren't there. Sure. But I get very self-conscious, like, people who walk in, and I'm like, one, two, six hundred, seven hundred, <laughs> eight hundred, three million, <laughs> right. Ooh, yeah, girls, yeah. yeah. Check out this pub, what's up, yeah. ladies? <laughs> um, I hear what you're saying, and that's honestly why I really enjoy going to parks, and, and finding other places to do it. That being said, you're going to get weird looks regardless of where you are, especially with the way the world is going, where everybody's really out of shape and exercise yeah. in a public place is kind of frowned upon. 
I kind of wear that badge like I wear. I kind of wear that that label like a badge of honor. Like I'm the weirdo guy that works out, you know. And yeah. I'm if, if that's the only thing they have against me to make fun of me for that I'm exercising and trying to better myself. You know, I kind of laugh at myself too. Like, oh yeah, well, whatever. You know, and they'll laugh too. Yeah. And you know, I'm I'm more than okay with it. But I, I definitely I hear what you're saying. It's it can be very self conscious, especially yeah. if you're in a hostel with ten people in a room. You know, in those instances, I would try to find a, a public place somewhere yeah. where the only people looking at you are passersby, or, you know, I go early in the morning or late in the afternoon, I go to a park where nobody is and just do push-ups. It, there can be any, you need, you need, a, you need a, a, a plot of ground about this big, however, however long you are, yeah. that's the amount of ground space that you need to complete a workout. So I try to find a place where if you are self-conscious, I would find a place somewhere in that city where you can do it. I mean, I've done pull-ups on like tree branches outside of stadiums in Singapore. I did pull-ups on bus stop overhangs in the New Zealand airport. Yeah. Um, just, uh, I mean, anywhere and everywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Once you kind of get over that initial feeling of this is kind of weird because I'm in a public place and exercising, you kind of feel cool about it. Like, hey, I'm bettering myself and it doesn't matter where I am. I can still do it. Yeah. So one of the other big things about being healthy is eating right. Mm -hmm. And so I am, if you people that know about my blog and have seen me transition into, you know, being semi-nomadic, one of the reasons I wanted to settle down mm -hmm. because I like to cook. I love cooking and I wanted a kitchen. Sure. And one of the things I hate about traveling is the lack of a kitchen. And especially when you go to a hostel, you're like, oh, there's a kitchen here. And they got like a dirty pan, like salt. And you right, like, the sink is full of dishes that people yeah. were supposed to wash, but they didn't because they're in, inconsiderate. It's yeah. Like, Come on, man. <laughs> and then I think, okay, you know, I want to go. I want to have a salad. I want to go do this. But you yeah. don't know, like, you, you have a routine at home. I know where my, the health store is. Mm -hmm. Like, I know where the Whole Foods is. Right. When you're traveling... And you're trying to stay in shape because a lot of what you do is also teaching people about healthy eating. Yep. He has an app dedicated to paleo, the paleo diet. Yes, sir. And so how do you find healthy habits for eating healthy? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I always pull from, and this is, I can't remember if I'm getting it exactly right or, or close, but I, I'm a huge fan of the quote by Teddy Roosevelt. It's, do the best you can with what you have mm -hmm. where you are. And it means, you know what, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the paleo diet. I think it makes sense to me for so many different reasons, and I've seen it work for so many different reasons. Essentially, it's eating, getting enough protein, and then eating enough fruits and vegetables and nuts, yeah. and cutting back on, on processed foods and carbs and grains and things yeah. like that. Unfortunately, especially when you're traveling and you're on a really tight budget, um, you go to any hostel and it's pasta. And, rice. and pasta and rice. They yeah. people they buy their giant bag of pasta and rice, and that's all they eat. There's very little. It's all carbs. There's very little protein. But it's sustenance, and that's what they're choosing to live on. For me, when I started traveling, money was very tight for me as well. Traveling through Australia and New Zealand when I had just begun the uh, the site at full time, I made a conscious effort. Just like I said, exercise has to be a priority. I made a decision that healthy eating has to be a priority. And a lot of people don't want to hear it, but how you eat is going to be responsible for eighty percent. 80 to 90 percent of your success or failure when it comes to losing weight, yeah. getting healthy, building muscle, whatever it is, your diet is so freaking important. That being said, obviously you have to. I mean, obviously you're gonna have cheat days, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure, right? Same yeah. thing. The never two rule. I, I mean, yep. I've seen you eat burgers. You mm -hmm. know? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I had one last night. It was delicious. Actually, yesterday was was pulled pork. I think it's the only option. Sometimes you're gonna be in a situation where your option is airport food or food at a bus stop, gas station, whatever. I mean, these things, yeah. these things happen and that's okay. You know, you, like I said, Teddy Roosevelt, do the best you can with what you have. So as someone who traveled to say, Austra you went to Australia, mm -hmm. really expensive country. Sure. You're on a budget. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason why budget travelers eat so much pasta and rice and chicken is because it's the cheapest option. Mm -hmm. So what are what advice do you have for people who are like, well, this is all great, Steve. I would love to eat healthy, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. So how did you manage to do it? And what advice would you give mm -hmm. to the world on how to do it too? <laughs> That's funny. Housekeeping's here. Yeah. Uh, come back later, please. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> um, so essentially what I would do and what I did in those situations, like you said, I find the cheapest protein source available. Yeah. 
chicken, always a win. Okay. Um, I try to cut back on the rice and pro, uh, the, the rice rice and pasta mm -hmm. when I can because I know whenever I have the opportunity to eat healthy, I eat as healthy as possible. I find frozen vegetables to be sort of a good bridge because, yeah, they're not fresh, but oh, certainly better than nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's better than nothing, and it's cheap. And all you gotta do is boil it in water. Yep. And presto, you have some source of vitamins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, chicken and chicken and vegetables was my, was my go-to. Whether I was in Thailand or Japan, China, whatever it was, wherever I was, you could always find some sort of chicken or fish yeah. and vegetables. And I would eat that whenever I had the opportunity. If I if I was in a hostel that had a decent kitchen, and I would offer to to cook. Uh, chicken stir fry for the other people that lived in the building yeah. and the, we'd all have a meal together and hang out um, and that was awesome for me because then the next day you might be on a bus and the only option is pizza it's like okay well I'm going to eat pizza today knowing that yesterday I did the best I could and tomorrow I'm going to do the best that I could so the the issue I think a lot of people run into is they eat one, health, one unhealthy meal and then they say well lunch today was unhealthy so dinner might as well be unhealthy too yeah. because lunch I've already ruined today and that's not true every meal counts you know, and just like I don't want to miss two days in a row working out, I try not to miss two meals in a row when I'm eating healthy or unhealthy. And if it happens, if it's a day, then the next day is the most important meal I've had in a long time because I try to get right back on track. Momentum is a powerful thing. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you, like, what's a good way to to motivate people? But I think you've already answered it. The, the never to rule is mm -hmm. pretty much if you keep that as a guideline. And I like that. I'm going to follow that now, too. If you keep that as a guideline, then... It doesn't feel you don't feel as bad about yourself because sure. because it's like oh well I already got off the wagon right I'm just gonna oh I'm here. useless now and that's yeah. not true when I eat a bad meal you know a lot of people have like cheat meals and cheat days yeah. I don't look at it like that I look at it more instead of like this is a conscious decision I'm making to eat something that's probably gonna taste good and might not be that great for me I'm okay with that like I don't want to feel guilty or bad about myself for making that decision yeah it's a decision I'm making because I'm a hundred percent in control and that means the next meal I'm gonna eat. I'm still in 100% control. I'm going to try to eat healthy again for that option. And then if something else comes up, it is what it is. You know, you do the best, like I said, you do the best you can when traveling, but understand that every meal, every workout, every five minutes of exercise, and taking, going for a walk instead of taking the bus mm -hmm. somewhere, adds up. And it's accumulation of all these little tiny changes done repeatedly over the course of a long trip that keep you in, keep, keep you on target and keep that momentum going. You can build up a ton of momentum before you start traveling, but if you take four days off, that momentum kind of slows to a halt, and it's very yeah. easy after two days off to all of a sudden take three, and take a week off, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's three weeks, and it's like, but if you can find a way to do just one tiny thing every day that keeps you thinking healthy, and even maybe if you're traveling, find somebody else that's, that's also interested in getting healthy in the same yeah. hostel, or you know, connect online, and, and consistently keep yourself thinking, I need to be healthy, I need to make these Read his blog. Yeah, sure. That's a great idea. <laughs> Nerdfitness.com. All right. So, last question. Okay. Um, Lord of the Rings is better than Star Wars. Oh, is that not the question? Okay. Uh, sorry. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars, although I would say the new Star Trek movies have actually been pretty phenomenal. Um, and I'm interested to see what, what the new Star Wars movies holds. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic after the trailer. The original the Star Wars, not the last episode. Oh, yeah. The original, right. The yeah. original three, for sure. George Lucas learned the art of destroying anything, right? Mm -hmm. Indiana Jones. Unshot first. Right. Shot first. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, anyways, I got you off target. What was your actual last question? Curse you, Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are three pe actionable pieces of advice you would give people mm -hmm. that they could do? Sure. If you, get, if, if you had to give someone only three things, mm -hmm. what would it be? One, build the healthy habit of finding a way to do something active every day to keep you healthy. Whether it's going for a walk or strength training for five minutes, like you said, it could be push-ups in a hostel room. Or I have a workout on my site for free called the 20-minute hotel workout. And it's a workout you can do in 20 minutes in any hotel room in the entire world. Guaranteed you'll find a way to complete this workout. To test that theory, I'm going to make him do it. <laughs> Um, so find a way to just do something healthy every day and, and think I am making this decision because I am continuing this momentum of being healthy, which will then carry over to the healthy eating decisions that you're making. Yeah. So first tip, build a healthy habit. Okay. Two, uh, I would say find a way to eat one healthy meal 
a day, whether it's picking out, you know, a, a piece of fruit instead of, you know, uh, a really unhealthy breakfast or finding a way to eat some, some, some protein and vegetables for, for dinner or lunch instead of just pizza or boiling a bag of rice. Like okay. when I traveled, I made healthy eating a priority, especially when I was in more expensive countries, I cut back my budget on other places and, and you know, I, I might've gone out a little bit less or had one less beer in Australia. Yeah per night and like yeah that's a sacrifice I had to make I felt really good about it because it made me feel better about myself on a day to day basis and you don't wake up hungover which means you could do more stuff in the day well that yeah and you you know what it, like I'm, I'm not it's funny people when I have meetups are like dude is it cool if I have a beer I'm like yeah man get me one like yeah. I you know I still go out I have a lot of fun I plan on having a great time this weekend I'm gonna eat unhealthy food I'm gonna have probably too many beers tomorrow night and I'm okay with that yeah. Because I know come Monday, I'm going to get right back on track because these are decisions I'm making, not because I'm cheating or because I'm falling apart or because I'm running out of momentum. It's because I'm making a conscious decision to do these things because it's what I want to do at that moment, knowing that I can get right back on track after. So two, what was that one? Uh, healthy eating. Healthy eating, so right. We, we, Find a way to eat one health, at least yeah, a healthy meal a day. Make a habit, eat one healthy meal a day. Yep. And Love. if you only have time to exercise for 15, 20 minutes, make it strength training. Um, but the, the most bang for your buck, find a way to do some push-ups and squats, find something to hang from for pull-ups. If you can't do those, use your luggage to do, you know, bicep curls or uh, dumbbell rows with, with your luggage or a backpack or something. Find a way to work out your whole body and, and focus on strength training. And even if you do that for 15 minutes twice a week, it's enough for you to maintain muscle mass or even build muscle mass combining if if you are also finding a way to prioritize your healthy eating as well. So strength training is the best thing you can do if you only have minimal time. Okay. Um, healthy eating has to be a priority if you can find a way to increase your food budget if it's really important to you and you're in a foreign country where food is not food is not cheap. And three, healthy habits. We are creatures of habit. And if you can find a way to, even if for five minutes a day, going for a quick walk, doing a couple of push-ups, building a healthy habit while traveling, it kind of becomes your, to borrow a term from the TV show Lost, which I loved, um, it's, your, it's your constant. You know, yeah. like for Desmond, his constant was, was Penny. Yeah. For me, my constant while traveling, being in a completely different country or a completely different city every single day for months at a time, exercise became my constant. That was the one thing I knew would keep me sane. Well, no matter where I went, I could find a tree branch, I could find a park, I could find something, some place to exercise, and that kept me sane. All right. Well, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Uh, I should thank you for being here in my hotel room, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get some crazy exercise after this. <laughs> uh, no, that gets taken out of context. <laughs> so you can find Steve at nerdfitness.com, as well as on Twitter, yep. Steve Cam, uh, and Facebook, Nerd Fitness too. I'll link to all of this, so Sweet. you don't have to worry about the spelling. <laughs> and thanks for being here and all this talk about food. Made me hungry, especially because it's lunchtime. Yeah, we, should, we, should, we so should go find some good uh, food carts or something we, here in We're Portland. in Portland, Oregon, and they are known for food carts, so we're going to eat up a storm. Damn straight. And it's going to be delicious and definitely healthy. So, until next time, travel safe, travel wide, and travel often.